Uh, some of you remember Dark Gessman, he spoke to us before about um, they call it cryptobiology. Cryptozoology. Cryptozoology. Mm -hmm. And uh, so here's a little announcement to make. Hi, I'm the Vice President of the South Bay Creation Science Association, uh, counterpart of Jim. I've uh, been involved with uh, them about, oh boy, since 1986 anyway, several years. And uh, one of the things that got me excited about creation science was when a man handed me a rock with a footprint in it, and then he showed me a picture of where that rock with that footprint in it came from. And you could see clearly three-toed dinosaur footprints in the same strata. Fired me up for, the, for creation science from that point on. Well, time went on, and I've always been very interested in dinosaurs and man coexisting throughout history. They all got on the ark. They all got off the ark. <laughs> Stories of all cultures throughout all time, uh, knowing and inter interacting with dinosaurs, usually violently. They killed them. Well, they would refer to them as dragons because the word dinosaur wasn't invented until 1800s. Well, then in 1996, Dr. Thomas Kendall, creation lecturer, uh, has been here, I imagine. Mm -hmm. Oh, you got to get Thomas Kendall. Outstanding man of God. He is a creation evangelist, itinerant, all over the United States. He told me about Dr. Carl Baugh doing research in Papua New Guinea on living pterosaurs. I'm just going, living? What do, you, what do you mean, alive? You mean a dinosaur or flying dinosaurs alive? He goes, yeah, alive. He gave the evidence. The eyewitnesses are very credible. So he went over there. And I shortly after that got involved. There's been six trips by the Papua New Guinea research team over there. And the Papua New Guinea research team has developed into what it is today. It was initially just Dr. Ba getting support and getting help and members. And it has culminated into a brand new area. Now we have good reports from the mainland of Papua New Guinea, from New Britain, a very large island there. Uh, the Manus Islands, which is a small island chain where a smaller variety lives. All these other areas I mentioned have a, a pretty good size variety. Um, in the Manus Island chain, they describe creatures that uh, fly, that look like pterosaurs. Uh, these are the tailed variety uh, of about four to seven foot wingspan. Those are the little ones. On the mainland in New Britain, they describe them anywhere from uh, six feet all the way up to over 20 feet, averaging somewhere around 11 feet. Well now, we've been doing research, we are very close, we, we have pictures of, oh, they glow at night like fireflies, for those of you who haven't heard, yeah, I know, another thing, another a wrench in the works. They are bioluminescent, and believe it or not, they're referred to in scripture. Isaiah 30, verse 6, you can look it up, refers to the fiery flying serpents alongside animals like camels, donkeys, lions, and vipers. So you know those animals. But now we have a little more insight into what the fire flying serpent might be. We first heard about pterosaurs in Papua New Guinea. We didn't know they glowed. And then we found out later as we did the research that they glowed. Now we have a brand new research location. I cannot tell you whether it's the Manus Islands or New Britain or the mainland or any other spot, I have to leave it completely hidden and secret to the world until we really get a, a quality evidence to show you. But two nights ago, Scott Norman and I here, he is our uh, newest associate to the Papua New Guinea team. He has, uh, we have returned from an expedition and I'd like him to share now what he saw. Hi, my name is Scott, as Scott Normandy said. I'm also, um, a little bit of my background, I'm uh, president of Crypto Safari, which is a cryptozoological organization that researches pterosaurs, living dinosaurs. Back in uh, 1991, it's been a while now, I've gone in over to Africa to look for Mokele and Bimbe, which we believe to be living the Sarapur dinosaur. I've done some research down in Peru looking into an unknown primate there, and then recently working with Garth and the others on. Pterosaur sightings, you know, worldwide. Uh, 
two, a couple nights ago, about 2 a.m. in the morning, I saw, I had a figure fly over my head, over a building and into a field. Uh, the figure was at least had a ten, eight to 10 foot wingspan. Uh, the wings are sort of bat-like. Uh, what sort of caught my thing is a, is a thing with the had a head crest like a pterosaur. The head crest was at least, I'm thinking two feet long. Um, so that really caught my attention. Um, and how I saw it, I was just looking up in the sky, looking for the glowing light, and all of a sudden this figure just came over the shed, oh, and into this field. Um, if I had not been looking there, I probably wouldn't have saw it. Um, yeah, they fly silently. There was not a sound at all on this thing. After it went into the field, I put my flashlight out there, and unfortunately it was already gone. Uh, I don't know where it went. Um, so that's what we're looking at. I mean, we're still in these little stages. Um, it's pretty exciting though, as I told Garth and I've been the most skeptical on this trip. Because um, that night when I was up doing the research, I was just like, okay, I'm going to sit down. I did not have any video cameras, no cameras or nothing. And even if I did, I don't think I would have seriously had time to get it. And I saw this for 15 to 20 seconds. And so it was a pretty long sighting. And then, I mean, I can tell you with, a bit, uh, with, uh, with certainty that it was a large flying animal. Eight to ten foot wingspan looks like a pterosaur. Uh, 100% right now, no. But that's what I can tell. So we're, we're, once we get this all figured out, it'll be interesting to see what we actually have. There was a little more to it. We uh, we were told that the the creatures. We were told four things. First of all, there's this big giant creature in their area that has a, a big head crest. Uh, a long tail with a diamond-shaped flange, um, uh, pterosaur-like wings, the whole, it looked like a pterosaur, flying kind of dinosaur. That's technically not a good term, flying dinosaur, but it communicates. It communicates the proper term being pterosaur. There's a pterosaur. There. Then he presents a picture, a, a video to us. Um, he sent it to us. Uh, that was, he, he happened to have a video camera in his area of the world, and uh, showed us on video what he captured, and it looked possibly like a pterosaur, possibly like a bat. It intrigued us enough. He also said there are stars that he's been seeing for years, over de decades almost, of basically like shooting stars, except these shooting stars pull out of a dive or they go up, or they make a turn. Shoot, meteors don't do that. <laughs> also something meteors don't do, they fall like rain in one direction. So if the wind's blowing rain, all the rain falls in the same direction. These meteors, quote unquote, they go in all directions any particular time of the night. It seems apparent these are not meteors. And these are these evident pterosaurs flying at altitude. Um, the other thing is, when they fly low, they look so spectacular. The only thing to describe them is, is like a 4th of July firework display. They'll streak across the sky with a tail so big and sparkling, it doesn't look like anything else but a big, giant 4th of July display. All four of these were observed while we were there. Every, both the creatures and the phenomenon of light were all observed. So this is exciting stuff, and it's not over. There are two members in the field as we speak, and when it is dark in their time zone, they plan to put out rodents and snares, and they're going for capture tonight. We've got to keep them in prayer uh, for success and, of course, for safety. Thank you.